and his he's spoken at Limark in person in years gone by, and I'm delighted to have him speak to us tonight on our Zoom conference. And with no further ado, I will turn it over to you, Gordon. All right. Well, thanks, Harry, and a very good evening to Limark members and guests from other clubs uh, near Long Island and New York. Wow, we go way back. And way back, all the way 45 years ago, when uh, Dick Moses uh, drove me around and he said, you know, Gordo, you with Standard Communications uh, selling a ham radio from Japan? I don't think it's going to go well. And he was right. Uh, when we went to some of the places in New York City, just about got our, you know, what's thrown out because we were coming in with a Japanese handheld. I can remember uh, Jan Bridge. You all remember Jan Bridge and Kitty. Uh, they said, no, no, uh, we, have, we have no use for a, a Japanese handheld. And wow, now look where we are. Um, Richard Cowan was there, of course. Bill Pasternak, uh, what a driving force of ham radio. Ken Newbeck, the uh, six-meter man. Carol Perry, uh, with all her great uh, work with the schools. Uh, radio Club of America, of course, John Amadeo. You've created them all in your city and Long Island. And of course, the boat shows, um, I've got you all on full screen. And because I'm not going to have any video, you can certainly stay full screen as well. Let me see a raise of uh, physical hands if you attended the boat show either at the Coliseum. How many remember the Coliseum, huh? Well, there's, uh, those were the days. That was the only place they could bring in a large sailboat in the uh, uh, Coliseum. And, uh, of course, we then went down to uh, Javits. Uh, Times Square was, uh, what a huge change in Times Square, where the police department is now. Won't even think about it before. But, wow, New York City was my growing up in the marketing of radio. So thank you all with uh, Limark for uh, putting up with this guy from California that came whizzing into town, only get a uh, an up and from uh, those of you in the city. Well, we've gone a long way with ham radio and this last year has just been uh, a terrific um, downer for a lot of the world. But for ham radio, uh, it's actually been an upper because uh, ham radio uh, continues to play a very important part in communications. And of course, part 97 of the rules and regs says that we're dedicated to not only furthering the art, but also providing emergency communications. And that's what I thought I would bring to all of you at home uh, tonight are some excerpts of emergency calls that are quite chilling and emergency calls that we can learn how to make our emergency calls even better based on some of the ones that we heard uh, over the air. So without further ado, and again, you can stay open screen. That way I can see all of you and you can see all each other. Let's go to the two meter band and I'll never forget uh, uh, Dick Moses on two meters. I said, uh, uh, you know, what, what are you doing for crystals? Where do you get crystals? And he says, no, we have the GLB synthesizer. Now you've got to go way back for that one. And again, first time for me in New York City, realizing I was trying to market a uh, two meter handheld with crystals, also marine radios at the boat show, thinking pretty soon crystals are gonna go away. But one thing that has never gone away are amateur radio emergency communications. Tango Shelter Delta, fire is spreading over to Country Club Drive rapidly. Five homes are in immediate danger. We need evacuation now of these homes. A copy of that. Be advised that uh, the sheriff's dispatch is activating the CERT team at this time for the evacuations, and the water company has been notified. Also, public works. Now, there was something interesting that with our fires out here in California, uh, the sheriff's department uh, that was in charge of CERT, Community Emergency Response Team members, energized them 
put them out there to uh, help out at uh, some of the command posts, and they did a great job. So I encourage all of you on the East Coast, if you've not made a relationship with your local police or fire CERT team, C-E-R-T, federally sponsored, and they're looking for things to do, this is also a growing ground for ham radio operators who want a little bit more than the half a watt well, now it's two watts out of their family radio service radios. More on fires. Listen to break, uh, break. this. Four homes on Country Club engulfed in flames. We require further resources, and we still have no uh, water pressure at this time. Control County Fire copy. Uh, resources from the original fire ground are being redeployed to those areas. Uh, uh, helicopters are incoming to make water drops on those structures. Well, as you probably saw on the news, uh, we were ravaged with a lot of fires here in Orange County. In fact, uh, tonight uh, at about uh, 9 o'clock on our Ham Nation cast, uh, we're going to have some of the uh, slides and short shots of the fire communications that uh, a lot of them were handled by hams on Zoom, just like right here. We'll see how Zoom has played an important part. Well, let's go back to uh, your and Carol Perry's uh, part of uh, the world and talk about all the storms you've had. Uh, we'll talk about uh, Superstorm Sandy shortly and some calls, but the biggie, of course, was Katrina. These were communications on the 40-meter band as Katrina was making itself on shore. 40 meters. Three inches of rain since last night. About three inches of rain since last night. Does that guy sound a little bit? Does that guy sound a little bit stressed? Yeah, just a little bit. We don't have any electricity. Oh, he doesn't have any electricity, but the ham is still on the air. Points out the need for good batteries, and the BioNO lithium iron phosphate batteries are really popular out here on the West Coast. Uh, the whole block is out, uh, and the winds are estimating we're gusting up, up over 50. Uh, we have broken branches lying around, and uh, I wanted to say uh, I'm at 29 yes, by Wow, 50 miles an hour on the winds. Well, you in New York City have had your share of winds and hurricanes that have worked their way up there, so you know all about that. But uh, the ham radio operators came to the rescue of the National Weather Service in Slidell when the hurricane took their high-frequency inter-National Weather Service comm channel away on single sideband on 5 megahertz on an NTIA channel. Some hams had the NTIA equipment uh, authorized for Coast Guard Auxiliary or Mars or Civil Air Patrol. They came right in there and helped, but there was no antennas connected to because the whole roof had blown off the Slidell weather station. Okay, I'm getting a report from Alpha Delta Pi, Delta Papa. Uh, that the National Weather Service in Slidell has lost all HF radio operations over. Yeah, they lost them because they had no more antennas. What a deal. So all of us hams, let me see a show of hands. How many of you have a, a vehicle, a good old Long Island uh, mobile radio setup with one of those big antennas that everybody comes over going, holy smokes, what is that? Uh, I don't see many hands. Oh, there's one. All right, Richard, uh, you get to do the demo later on. But anyway, uh, having those big antennas really helped out. Well, Katrina really came rushing ashore when we were Roger, he says he's losing trees. Uh, he's going down at this time. All those now, notice there was a lot of background noise, so good training on these audio outtakes is to get those members that are just on 2 meters VHF and UHF 440 Get them on the high frequency. In fact, this weekend is the 10 meter contest. They'll soon learn how to tune in single sideband and to put up with that noise in the background. That's just good old noise that all of us on HF know. Well, when the hurricane blew through, uh, they were hearing uh, no bad reports out of New Orleans. In fact, they weren't hearing any reports out of New Orleans. But then this ham drove to the top of a structure, a carport structure, 
and made this call, and none of us could at first fathom what he was saying about New Orleans, because we all thought that New Orleans was spared by the Katrina. New Orleans is shut down. New Orleans has got major destruction, and uh, they've got the roof off the Superdome. They've got uh, water in the business district. They've got, uh, you probably know better from the uh, from the national TV coverage than we do. We have no TV. All we have is... Uh, all we have is ham radio, and that was plenty to alert everybody from coast to coast that New Orleans was ravaged. And the reason they didn't hear from New Orleans after Katrina was all of the major networks were down, including all the cell towers and so on. Well, we all report to the National Hurricane Center when these hurricanes uh, come ashore. And the National Hurricane Center out of Miami does a fabulous We are job. transferring uh, information to the National Hurricane Center. And uh, that helps the uh, forecasters to uh, predict uh, landfall and uh, tracking of the hurricane. Okay, so with that said, uh, are there any stations uh, on the southwest coast of Florida that have hurricane-strength winds? So if you've got a software-defined radio or an HF radio 14 decimal 325, but let's hope the hurricane season is over and we won't have any more of those hurricanes uh, coming north. But you know, you in New York City really saved the day uh, for ham radio because when incidents like this occur, ham radio still stays on the air although everything else around you literally went off the air. The first ham to come on scene was so petrified by what they saw in New York City, all he could do was key the mic and watch. The uh, sirens in the background, that ham finally had enough courage to say it like it was. The World Trade said that tower number one is on fire. The whole outside of the building was just a huge explosion. We have a number of floors on fire. It looked like the plane was aiming towards the building. Transmitted a third along. We have the staging area at Sessing and West Street. Have the third along assignment go into that area. Set the alarm assignment report to the building. Okay. Wow. All we can say is those calls are chilling. And of course, uh, across uh, the river, uh, the American Red Cross hams uh, started setting up and so on, uh, ready to start evacuation centers. And then the grim news came in. So again, even though the towers came down with a ton of ham radio and all sorts of public safety uh, repeaters on top, the hams were still able to stay in touch with local repeaters uh, over in uh, the New Jersey area. Uh, Gene with uh, KJC tells me that uh, they were very busy for weeks, even months, using many of the repeaters across the way. Well, even down in Washington, D.C., they've got their own problems. And this was one that I thought only we had in California. Earthquakes. Um, a horizontal motion lasted approximately 10 to 15 seconds. Very light. Over. Yeah, very light, but it uh, caused the uh, National Monument to uh, lose a few uh, cornerstones. Wow, things like that really get our attention. We have a lot of earthquakes here in Southern California, and the hams on the two meter have a repeater that we all go to and uh, report what we see. And many times municipalities and others will listen in. California Transportation Group that keeps all the roads rolling uh, couldn't believe, but yes, they could when they heard uh, this particular call. Report on freeway. By the way, ladies out there, you make the greatest dispatches on ham radio because you're always cool, calm, and collected. And we're out there going, oh my God. Roger, four miles uh, north of uh, Devonshire on the 
105 is quite a bit of buckling in two different places. There's a lot of, of uh, concrete up, uh, so you got to go through there real slow. Wow. Well, when the uh, concrete comes up off of an earthquake, ham radio, one of the very rebroadcast those reports long before Caltrans sends out or the Highway Patrol uh, radios in that the freeway has problems. That same uh, earthquake uh, that was centered about 40 miles away from downtown Los Angeles did something to one ham and one lady ham radio net control operator that is unbelievable. Listen to how calm each of them sound when he describes what occurred right after the earth. Freeway 10 and what section? That will be east south and west south near Washington. The bridges are down. The what? That will be east south and west south near Washington. The bridges are down. Did you catch that? The bridges are down. A complete freeway overpass collapsed onto the major freeway in Southern California. Hams were 10 minutes ahead of anyone else reporting that in because of all the cellular congestion. When big things happen here in SoCal, everybody gets on their cell phone and it gets overloaded. So wow, again, on the two meter band, that uh, ham was able to broadcast to the lady all about uh, the bridges are down. Some of the reports are uh, not quite that serious. Uh, they said that the quake was felt first in Westchester, then it was felt a few seconds later in Thousand Oaks. Wait a minute. A few seconds later felt here, and then a little later on there, earthquakes travel at the speed of sound in a solid about 4,800 feet per second, nowhere near the velocity of radio waves at 300 million meters per second. Um, so, wow, um, the, the earthquakes, rather than 196,000 miles per second uh, speed, the earthquakes are much slower. And here in Southern California, hams have our own earthquake repeater. And when somebody feels it here, we immediately get on there. So those folks 200 miles away will maybe begin to feel it, hopefully not bad, maybe uh, a minute later. So, wow. Again, the importance of ham radio on the two meter and the 440 band, where we have, as you do, a lot of 440 linked repeats. Report on from 80 meters, WD60X. 80 meters, WD60X. They jumped together. Uh, they jumped together. Okay, the Alpha Gundo station. Now, the WD60X is going to locate it next to Westchester. Uh, uh, two shots of uh, salt, uh, 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 so, wow, this is important stuff. And notice that they were indicating these reports on the 80-meter band. 80 meters for short skip, uh, especially in the early morning hours, is a great band to be able to get those reports out beyond what might be line of sight on the 2-meter band. So, high frequency, very important for Earth. In Long Beach, it uh, lasted several seconds. We had uh, a couple things. Uh, and the bird went crazy. Well, sometimes a little levity uh, during a non-critical emergency comes. Well, keep everybody sort of calm down so we can pass that traffic without being uh, uh, too uh, agitated. Well, this is sort of something I've been here for years. Uh, sort of an east-west, but so, some vertical motion. And there was two peaks, uh, a little bit at first, then a big peak, and then uh, it almost died down and it hit it harder for the second time. Wow. So these earthquakes, they're felt big time here in Southern California on a regular basis. But a few years ago, this ham radio operator in the Hawaiian Islands gave us a chilling description of what was happening in Hilo. And this is after the Japanese earthquake and the collapse of their nuclear facility there. Um, this was the Japanese earthquake that created a tidal wave. Tidal waves travel at about 400 miles per hour. So we had several hours notice before we would expect stuff to happen here in Southern California. But Hawaii, 
Listen to what this one operator, ham radio operator, is relaying out of Hilo, Hawaii. Amazing. Just an update from the big island of Hawaii. It's been reported that the uh, the water is receding in Hilo, too, on the breakwater, as well as, as at a couple of the beaches. So I just passed the information along. I'm on the southern end, and uh, that's the report from Hilo, Hawaii. That's the net, the HHR the water is completely receding out of the bay at Hilo. It comes in. And tidal waves, if you've never uh, seen one, uh, they're not a crashing wave. It's like high tide on steroids. Uh, those of you that remember Superstorm Sandy, which uh, Carol Perry does and others, uh, we'll give you that report in just a moment. But now let's go back to two meters. And uh, we have, as uh, I indicated before, repeaters that routinely standing by for any emergency traffic. Listen to this emergency traffic coming over on two meters. Just amazing. Oh my gosh, there's a school bus with kids on it and it's like 50 yards south of Falls Canyon on Avalon Canyon Drive. Report from uh, ham operators at scene on the number of patients that might be involved at the school fire. Would you check with our hospital resources and advise them of the number of casualties and be advised? This was in an area that the hospital was a minimal hospital for capacity. <clears throat> And it was several years ago, and it was a ham operator at the hospital that needed to have the other ham operator uh, indicate uh, phonetically what the medication needed for one of the school children that was in this overturned uh, bus. And we've got uh, need some medication for one of our trap car victims and want to know if you have five milligrams of amaldipine to settle I smell. I spell. I would hope so. Amount of acetylene? Boy, any physicians out there, maybe you know it, but uh, us hams, we didn't know it. So he spells it phonetically. Alpha, Mike, Lima, Oscar, Delta, India, Papa, India, November, Echo, next word, Bravo, Echo, Sierra, Yankee, Lima, Alpha, Tango, Echo, five milligrams. Boy, well, it points out, for those of you teaching ham radio, as we do here, learning the phonetic alphabet, and there's only one test question on the technician class uh, exam um, on um, the phonetic alphabet, they should have asked a lot more because that's very critical, especially when you're at the scene and you're needing to get a uh, hospital type of drug uh, uh, phonetically over the air. Well, as they were assessing the bus crash and bringing in helicopters to evacuate these young students, one of the hams looked over the side to see what in the world caused the bus to uh, slide off and go on its side. And listen to this. The bus collided with the car that we just discovered halfway down the hill at Falls Canyon and Avalon Canyon. It is overturned on the south side of Avalon Canyon Drive. Two occupants are trapped. We need the jaws of life. Both occupants are alive but severely injured. W6KLX. That was a terrific report. And once again, ladies, you know how to handle it as net controllers, keep everything at a constant pace, but a good one. Um, now, could the hospitals uh, handle all of these kids coming in via aircraft and uh, ambulances? Well, that was a question. Hospital is near capacity with ER teams still able to take unrelated cases. Wow, boy, ham radio again to the rescue. But you'd need a lot of hams for this catastrophe on Christmas morning. Listen to the relay that is coming over on the 20 meter maritime mobile net on 14300. Sri Lanka reports 31,000 casualties with ocean waters covering all southern and eastern coastlines. The estimate is 800,000 homeless and in need of medical supplies. Ham radio operators need immediately with high frequency radios. Wow, free trip to Sri Lanka, but uh, you'll be there for some time. Again, 
it was ham radio that got that initial report out because all of their telecommunications went down when they had the huge tsunami that uh, struck uh, uh, that uh, portion of the world. Well, on the uh, East Coast in your neck of the woods, in fact, uh, we took a look and saw the water pouring into uh, one of the subways was Hurricane Sandy. And listen to the wind report. And I'll give it to you ahead of time, 135 miles per hour. Hurricane will reach the coast early on Thursday. Maximum sustained winds are near 135 miles per hour with Whoa. higher gusts. Some fluctuation in intensity. Well, not only are the winds a huge problem with Superstorm Sandy coming ashore, but as we saw on Staten Island, the storm surge, always a problem. And your storm surge is greater than six feet and hard to measure. Uh, can you tell? Can you tell? A storm surge of six feet? Yeah, that's uh, well above uh, uh, your uh, high water mark. Wow, what a deal. So Superstorm Sandy, many of you handled emergency comms for that storm right there in New York City and Long Island, and uh, I applaud you for your uh, efforts. But now we go back to uh, the Gulf Coast where the U.S. Coast Guard is involved. Take a listen to this. this is uh, they were, the Coast Guard was sending somebody in there at, uh, as soon as they could expedite that. Roger. They were sending a helicopter in, but the helicopter was not able to find Bourbon Street and uh, 12th Avenue, but ham radio operators with APRS working with their local Coast Guard, of which I work with a Coast Guard auxiliary, introducing them to this technology. Wow. So the hams were able to uh, what was that, 15 years ago, maybe 10 years ago for Katrina, uh, give them the coordinates in latitude and longitude. So again, there's a drill for LIMARC operators uh, when we finally get out from not being able to get together. And that is uh, using our handhelds to find locations, say your locations, and be able to, via APRS, get the messages out loud and clear. Uh, I want the net to know that the 21 people at Fair Street has been uh, received by the Coast Guard, and they are acting on it. Uh, uh, no, no calls on that one. That is done, uh, Dave. Right. Then the ham comes on, gives latitude and longitude, plus the Coast Guard had a ham operator showing them on a larger screen the exact location for 21 people stuck on a Anybody roof. Anybody in New Orleans can report or get some action for these people stuck on the roof. That was the request from Nick Control. And it gets you. Yeah, anybody in New Orleans can help these people. Is there anybody I can relay? I heard somebody. Come out. Members of the Coast Guard Auxiliary, both coasts, including the third Gulf Coast, uh, members of the Auxiliary, are allowed on NTIA channels, which are uh, also shared with FEMA operators. Many times FEMA operators will uh, uh, take over one of our five 60 meter channels. Let me see a show of physical hands. How many of you on five megahertz, the channels on five megs? And yeah, there's a couple. That's important because when a big one hits, many times this is the channel that FEMA has. And as you can hear by this transmission on five megahertz, the ham uh, is uh, stating that the FEMA does not have a ham call sign, but it's a FEMA unit. Take a look. Hey, Yankee 960, was that you? Or the FEMA van come now or over? Yep, that was him in the FEMA van. Well, here's the uh, uh, closing down of these emergency calls. And again, these were received uh, about 1,800 miles away on the 20-meter band. And this is that same operator who, after a day of waiting for federal help during Katrina, as you well know, was stalled in bureaucracy, uh, pleading over ham radio for the help. Tell the crews that come, if they're coming to uh, work on the towers, 
that they will need uh, generators and uh, fuel for the generators. And uh, basically, they're, they're in essence hitting the beach with no uh, no facilities to support them. No facilities to support them. Recommend they bring all of their own food and all of their own uh, creature comforts. QSL? So how is your Limark creature comforts grab and go bag doing with beside all the handhelds and the rechargeable batteries and uh, batteries that take uh, double A cells? Um, wow, uh, that's important because you may be out there for some time. And as Miss Perry and I discovered in Staten Island, we found some hams that had multiple battery chargers and we're offering to charge everyone's handheld uh, cell phone uh, because they left their house so quickly, they left without their chargers. So uh, that's another thing that ham radio operators can do. And for those that tune in to Ham Nation tonight in about another hour, you're going to hear how ham radio operators did the unthinkable in 2020, handling health and welfare traffic yeah, many of the residents of our local fires uh, five days ago were trapped at their homes. Luckily, the homes uh, were saved, but they had no electricity. The cell phone towers um, uh, either burned up or the generators uh, ran out of fuel. They had no comms out, and it was ham operators that went into the area to provide the emergency comms and also asked, do we have any station on frequency that can handle health and welfare traffic? One of our newer hams said, well, what's that? Health and welfare, that's a message. And uh, so we took down the message and I always proceed my phone call uh, with the words, uh, ham operator with good news. Oh, they go thankful on the uh, telephone. And I tell them that uh, mom and dad are fine. Uh, the ranch is still uh, okay, but uh, they're not going to be able to see anyone or get anyone in to help them with supplies for some time. So be prepared that uh, on the repeaters, Limark repeaters, you might be asked to handle health and welfare traffic. So finally, uh, here is uh, that one lone ham operator uh, giving a a uh, real call for help that they needed during Katrina. Uh, if any uh, support effort from fire departments, Coast Guard, telephone companies coming down, we, we deeply appreciate it and we thank you and hope we, uh, we're in your prayers. W2MIA. So these are some of the noteworthy ham radio calls that we have recorded here as well as in the field. And many of them probably may even be your voices on there as well. So I'd like to open up uh, any discussion that you may have. I have about 15 minutes before I need to break off and see who won all of your great prizes that you're going to announce at uh, uh, the half hour from now. But uh, do we have any questions for me, Gordo? And I'll see if I can try and hear them and answer them. So all you need to do is to hit the space bar on your computer. You don't have to search around for unlock and uh, let our uh, computer operator uh, be in charge of that. So questions that you might have, over. Hey, Gordon, it's Richie KTKNB. Hi, Rich, go ahead. I'm taking presidential uh, <laughs> superiority. Um, Gordon, one of the stories that, that I have related from your last uh, visit uh, was the Catalina fires, because I think that that, as much as anything that I've ever heard, really showed the value of amateur radio because it absolutely saved lives. So I wonder if you would take a minute to tell that story to others. Yes, uh, we have an island 26 miles across the sea. Catalina Island is waiting for me. You've heard the song. Um, Catalina Island is... Uh, on its own when it really comes to a lot of services, especially about uh, 15 years ago. And what occurred was uh, they were doing some maintenance at Catalina's one and only AM radio tower. 
and uh, they were uh, doing some welding of one of the guy lines and it was during a period of uh, windy conditions. Uh, the welding started the fire and the Catalina only really has a volunteer type fire department with only two or three paid officers and uh, only uh, a couple of units. And uh, that was part of the Catalina fires that uh, crept in very close to Avalon, the main city on Catalina Island. And what you heard were hams relaying calls to the LA County Sheriff's Department on the mainland requesting uh, helicopters and other evacuation supplies uh, and more supplies of water uh, coming in both by boat as well as uh, water drops. So it was a coordinated effort and ham radio played a very important part because two of the cell towers um, um, were uh, burned up the coax going up the tower. So they were off the air. So ham played a very important part of that beautiful island, Catalina Island. Luckily no lives lost and uh, the uh, homes that uh, were catching fire were extinguished and it was they were not a total loss. So that's good news. And the city of Avalon was saved mainly due to ham operators and the courageous fire department personnel. All right, thank you for that. All right, other questions? One comment, uh, Gordo. Uh, yes, and then we'll go to Ms. Perry uh, next. Go ahead. Aristein NY3H. I'm also a uh, uh, with Air Force Mars. Uh, very encouraging that we were able to get on 60 meters with uh, amateur radio uh, this past uh, COMEX, the uh, uh, our communications exercise. Uh, I'd like to see more of that. Um, it works out well. Talking about uh, health and welfare traffic, uh, we can help support the uh, national traffic system of uh, amateur radio. So it's nice to be able to see uh, uh, joint cooperation and efforts uh, going out of the, uh, the main and ordinary uh, streams. Uh, so Harris, yes, absolutely agree. And uh, those that are a part of FEMA, we have many ham radio operators embedded in FEMA. In fact, I'm not sure because things are changing so quick who the latest FEMA director is. At one time it was a ham, but this is great that we can share our resources on the 60 meter band. And the only thing I think that's holding 60 meters back is a lot of hams don't have a real easy antenna that includes the 60 meter band. Well, I got a five band trap vertical, but it doesn't load on. Well, no, it's not gonna load on 60 because it doesn't have it. Um, same thing with uh, beams would be way too uh, large for 60 meters. But the dipole, the simple dipole is what I use every day when we do our 60 meter uh, test comms. And uh, we just need to get more hams on the 60 meter band. And almost all newer radios come with the 60 meter band. And most Kenwood, Yesu and ICOM radios that are the older style have a secret diode that uh, can be removed. And you now turn on all the 60 meters, but be very cautious that you only do do it to your own radio, not a friend, because uh, that uh, diode removal causes the HF radio to transmit everywhere. So very cautious on the older radios. The newer radios only do the five channels on 60, a little bit each side of it, lucky for me for our Coast Guard work. So very good point. So thanks for bringing that up. And I believe I saw... Uh, um, a, a hand come up from Ms. Perry. Hi, Gordon. Another great presentation. Thank you. Uh, Gordon is on my RCA Youth Activities Committee. We're both members of the Radio Club of America. And he was in town for an RCA banquet weekend right after Sandy had hit. And uh, I had the dubious pleasure of taking him on a tour of some of the devastation. And I was able to show him the importance of the pockets of ham radio operators that didn't know where to go to first. There was so much damage. And I wonder if he remembers 
that I pointed out to him, Adam Marina, you were speaking of a six foot surge. Well, a 20 foot surge came through that night on Staten Island. And I was able to point out to you, Gordo, the boat that was lifted up and went right through the living room of home, of a home that was on a hill above the marina. That was the force of some of the things we had to, to deal with. And I will never forget uh, what we dealt with. And, and uh, Gordon did get a chance to come and see a tour of the devastation here. <laughs> well, thank you, Ms. Perry. And I, I should have brought that photo up, but uh, I was amazed to see a, about a 50 foot uh, uh, sloop on its side not just at the water line, but so far inshore that New York uh, City police had to get a big uh, uh, rector set type of uh, guard tower uh, up that high just to be able to get to it and make sure it stayed safe from looters. So, wow, what a deal. And uh, well, thank you for the uh, tour. And uh, we also saw uh, that uh, radio operators were assisting with PET evacuations. And uh, I'm a pet owner, as I know you are. And uh, we, um, uh, we were able to uh, see how the radio calls were so important for getting these pets to a safe shelter to be reclaimed by those residents who'd lost their dogs, cats, gerbils, and all the other ones we saw in the cages. So uh, very well orchestrated uh, response by all of the public safety personnel in both New York City as well as Staten Island. Thanks, uh, Carol. Appreciate that and look forward to all of you considering joining the Radio Club of America. I've been a member for maybe 25 years and uh, with uh, Ms. Perry uh, helping with uh, youth education, we've got young blood coming back into ham radio. Carol, over to you for a final and then I'll let you pass it on to maybe one or two more before I have to scoot off. Well, again, thank you for every time I see one of your presentations, I am always impressed. And Gordon does terrific behind the scenes work uh, in conjunction with our youth activities. And if anybody wants to know more about that, of course, get in touch, uh, get in touch with me. And this is me publicly thanking you for, uh, for what you do, Gordon. I'm gonna turn it over to Richard as the president. Well, I'm going to ask, uh, thank you very much. I'm going to ask if there's anyone else um, that has any questions for Gordon. If so, uh, raise your hand or let us know. Or you can just unmute. Gary? Dwayne. John, the second screen, you got George Sullivan uh, is raising his hand. George, go ahead. Also, someone on the phone has unmuted. If you have a question on the phone, go ahead. Okay. Hey, it, it, can you hear me now? Yes. Go yes. ahead. Yes. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, one of my questions, uh, Gordon, is uh, you spoke a lot about single sideband radio, and of course we use it. And I'm assuming there was CW there. But what about the new digital modes? What what role does something like FT8 have in the emergency communications world? Okay. And that's a great question. I should have mentioned that. Um, I don't play a lot of audio of the digital uh, in that uh, one has to be part of that network to grab that audio. But I digital could. is a terrific way, especially for agencies with hams aboard that need to pass traffic that may be sensitive, not necessarily confidential, but sensitive to just the general public listening in. But digital would allow those operators to actually steer to exactly which area they need the communications to come out of and which area is the communications directed to, as opposed to what would be an analog repeater that uh, if you're within range, everybody hears it. So I think the digital fusion, the DMR, the D-STAR, all of the digital modes play a very important part. And a lot of those digital operators are so tied into the digital aspect, 
we now need to say, now we need for you to branch out and bring in more digital operators that will start staffing uh, these uh, evacuation centers and passing traffic. So that's our, uh, that's my mission for next year. And that is to work with all the digital groups and say, how can we get you more involved in emergency comms? And we have several in the country that are heavily involved yeah. via DMR. We have DMR. a national infrastructure or a proposal for a national infrastructure. For Terrific. Yeah, so it's something that uh, we really need to address and we need to come up with uh, which digital uh, mode will be at different locations because Fusion doesn't necessarily, unless you have the right gear, talk to DMR, to DSTAR, to uh, many of the others. So um, uh, we need to indeed uh, do that on a national basis. So very, very good point that you raise. Anyone else with any questions? Well, Richard, I've got to get out of here because um, Ham Nation is, um, uh, we've got uh, tonight's cast and then we have next week's cast that uh, you'll all want to tune into. And um, um, we, uh, we then take a, a break. We don't know how long the break will be, but uh, tonight, next week will be uh, our uh, last couple for this year. And we just wish all of you with Limark and all of you with the other amateur radio clubs um, and uh, Gene with KJI and all his team, uh, we just wish everybody the best health and the best of everything. And let's wear our mask, socially distance, and get behind the microphone. And no cooties will get us right here on the mic. Oh, and uh, sanitize the mic if you're going to let someone else talk over it. So this is Gordo on the West Coast. And uh, we wish you all a very good evening. And I hope to be back there for the boat show, which I try and do every year uh, in another year from now and uh, pick up my uh, obligatory rock. This is from uh, your rock on uh, um, <clears throat> Central Park, you know, where those rocks are. <laughs> That's a piece of the rock. So I've got uh, all of New York right here. Limark, you're in my heart. Very 73 to you all. And now, Mr. President, we'll let you get ready for the door prizes. Well, Gordo, thank you, I want to thank you very, I want to thank you very much. Um, this year being a very tough year, but it's also Limark's 55th year. And given all the tough things that have happened this year, uh, this is really a great way to end the year with you as a speaker with really making a great presentation, which is what you always do. So thank you very much and a happy and a healthy new year to you. And okay, and I'll give you my address so you can send that uh, spare cat. No, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I hope everybody wins because you're all a winner in my book. 73 from Gordo on the West Coast. WB6 November Oscar Alpha, out. Thank you, Gordon.